God gave us health principles, which if they had been followed might have made us the healthiest people in the world. A power wherever we are and an example to the world. That was Dr. Kellogg. And Dr. Kellogg continues. He says, there will come a time when these diseases will come with such power and intensity that they will strike down everybody that has not yielded to God. Now, how on earth is tanning supposed to be a defense against satanic global poisoning? Did that pop into anyone's head, that question? Well, let's start connecting the dots. During the war on tuberculosis, it was discovered that sunlight and fresh air were the two primary weapons used to both prevent and reverse tuberculosis. A global movement was started called the Sun Cure. The pioneers of that movement had a very good re result, and they discovered something quite unexpected. Tanning accelerated healing. It has been a common observation, says Dr. Harris, that the cure of a tuberculosis patient parallels roughly the degree of skin pigmentation, or tanning. The greater the pigmentation, the more rapid the cure. Now, I'm taking you through a chain of evidence here. Now, Dr. Kellogg is about to tell us why this works. Just that this is a partial answer, but I'll give you the complete answer. He says, the improved circulation of the skin, which accompanies the pigmentation, is always attended by relief from a multitude of disagreeable symptoms. And Dr. Kellogg was considered by the prophet of the Lord to be the greatest physician in our world. He was famous the world over. If he said something, it was in the medical journals everywhere. All right. And if these, he says, let me read that in totality, without interruption. The improved circulation of the skin, which accompanies the pigmentation, is always attended by relief from a multitude of disagreeable symptoms. And if these general light applications are supplemented by other indicated physiological measures and by proper regulation of the diet and general habits of, of life, multitudes of cases incurable by other means may be in the course of a few months, restored to excellent health. <laughs> but that is not yet the complete explanation. Dr. Kellogg continues. He says, phototherapy, that's either artificial or sunlight, light therapy, is a useful means of producing local and general hyperemia. In other words, lots of blood into the skin. Hyperemia of the skin for relief of the visceral congestion which is rarely absent in chronic disease. The pallor of the skin, which is nearly always present in chronic invalids, signifies not only anemia of the skin, but necessarily implies a congestion of the viscera, your internal organs, including the brain, by the way, or also the brain. The general muscular weakness, which accompanies chronic disease, prevents exercise so that the muscles as well as the skin are anemic. You sensing the increasing stress here? The importance of this fact will be recognized when it is considered that the muscles, when active, are capable of holding one half of all the blood in the body. The idle muscle contains not more than one fourth or one sixth as much blood as the active muscle. A pale skin and inactive muscles necessarily imply congested visceral. Viscera. This chronic congestion of vital organs necessarily results in, now here's some really painful words here, necessarily results in derangements of function of those organs and often in change of structure of those organs. This is serious. But how is this related to counteracting global poisoning? We're getting there. Here's the answer. Chronically pale skin and chronically inactive muscles cause a chronic imbalance in the blood circulation of the body, forcing most of the blood into our trunk, just jamming it in there, thus unnaturally congesting our organs, even to the point of derangement of function and change of structure of the internal organs, and here it is, thus hindering the organs of detoxification. Tanning decongests our internal organs of detoxification. It balances our blood circulation by distributing it 
distributing it evenly throughout the entire body. And it's automatically when we sunbathe and tan. This is a major <laughs> detoxification breakthrough. It is exactly what we need in this escalating satanic poisoning of mankind. Now, as marvelous as that is, it gets even better when you ask the question, how long does this improved skin circulation of a thorough tan last? Hasselbach noted that the increased vascularity of the skin induced by light or tanning lasts for six to nine months. Now that is information we can use. And it sounds like divine forethought, doesn't it? Because it carries us through the winter, both with increased uh, vitamin D and decongested internal organs. So if we want to relieve a multitude of disagreeable symptoms, we need to get tanned. If we want to prevail against the escalating poisoning of mankind, we need to get tanned. God embedded our health care into nature. Nature is to be our main line of defense against the toxic weapons formed against us in such a time as this. God is leading us back, not just to the Adventist health message of 1863, but now he's sending us all the way back to Eden. Study my original, the authentic. If you had studied that, you wouldn't have needed that health message of 1863. Number five, the ground. God intended that the very ground we walk on be healing automatically. We were designed to stay connected to the earth from which we were formed. Eden showcased this for us when Adam and Eve walked barefoot upon the earth. Walking barefoot is a major Eden health principle, and it is absolutely essential for our health. Scientists are calling this lost barefoot health principle the most important health discovery of all time. God has placed magnificent healing properties in the soil. All right, and what is this healing principle? Substance, I mean, well, the surface of the earth and waters are saturated with an almost infinite supply of negatively charged particles, electrons, like the air. That's all. This is not new science. Surface of the earth and waters carry a slightly negative charge. So that means we're supposed to have a slightly negative charge in it. All right, staying connected to the earth, one, shields us from low frequency EMFs if you're standing barefoot on the soil or the grass or touching a moist tree, which is basically the electrical devices in your homes, you know, the low, low frequency stuff. So staying connected to the earth begins to address the toxic effects of man-made electrical EMFs and dirty electricity, the poisoning of our air. So when we finally reconnect ourselves to the earth from which we were formed, it changes the polarity of our entire body. It recalibrates our bodies back to the Eden estate. And that recalibrated pol polarity can do amazing things such as this EMF and also it immediately prevents blood clots. Now electrons from the earth enter the body when you're barefoot and coat the red blood cells so that the cells repel each other. And then they cannot clump. Think this clot shot thing. And the blood viscosity goes down. It's easier for the heart to pump the blood. The blood pressure goes down. All kinds of cardiovascular issues, they go away. We get stocked up on electrons when we touch the earth. When we we need not be constantly touching the earth in order to be stocked up. The electrons are stored in our collagen until needed. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Therefore, God gave us a health care system that was also fearfully and wonderfully made. Blood on the left is from three participants before grounding. Blood on the right is after 45 minutes of grounding. The picture clearly shows a dramatic thinning and decoupling of blood cells. These are all three different patients. Staying connected to the earth prevents and reverses chronic inflammation and pain. According to Clint Ober, the discoverer of this barefoot principle, 
We cannot have chronic inflammation when we are grounded. There are many fabulous stories, shocking health recovery stories, when sick people started reconnecting with the earth from which they were formed. Many scientific studies. All right, staying connected to the earth resets our circadian rhythms and regulates cortisol levels, allowing us to obtain deep healing sleep. Our body does much of its healing during the sleep. So if we mess with our sleep, we will be far more susceptible to the weapons formed against us. I think we've all experienced that. Now the following explanations are from Clint Ober, the author of the book, Earthing. He was doing an experiment with some scientists on this topic. He says, we have a circadian rhythm, which is not affected by light. We have a circadian rhythm of cortisol secretions. High levels of cortisol wake us up. Low levels put us to sleep. Graph A is the expected 24-hour cycle of circadian cortisol. That's what it should look like. Cortisol is lowest at midnight. Whoa, Helen White. What did she say about midnight? Sleep. It's beginning to explain it. Cortisol is lowest at midnight, and it starts going back up at 4 a.m. You ever wonder why you keep waking up at 4 a.m. when you wanted to sleep in? It peaks at around 6. This may help explain that thing from Ellen White. Okay, next slide. Graph B shows wide fluctuations of cortisol highs and lows in a group of 12 ungrounded women. It's all over the map. Graph C is the result of grounding those 12 women for eight weeks while they slept. And it didn't take 12 weeks. It realigned their, it realigned their natural cortisol levels and rhythms, making the levels uniformed, normalized, and synchronized, even though they lived in different towns. It's not just light. It's touching the ground. So when I get back home, I go barefooted and it resets me immediately. It was a 12-week study, but it didn't take them 12 weeks to synchronize. Now, these 12 women experienced many health benefits, which we don't have time to cover. I do that in another presentation. This is Clint Olber's sake. Now, this is getting better as we go. At 4 a.m., you have a spike that comes up, and cortisol starts spiking, and it reaches a peak around 6 a.m. That allows you to get out of bed and not have a heart attack. So what we learned was what in the environment is signaling the body to start producing cortisol? It's not daylight. It's not sound. So the only thing that it could have been was the amplitude of Earth's electrical field starts to rise at 4 a.m. This, this is God programming us when we are to go to sleep and when we are to awake. Those of us who have had to work on night shift, oh my word, our lifespans are much shorter. Clint Ober continues, this is fascinating. But the thing that was most fascinating when we did this study, we had some participants in the beginning that were airline stewardesses from New York. You see where this is going? We measured their cortisol levels the first night. It was off by three hours, because they were from New York. This study was being done in California. And, but they arrived in, in uh, California. When they connected with the Earth, they synchronized with everybody else. So then, we learned that when you put your bare feet on the Earth, your body resynchronizes with circadian links, clocks. The cortisol rhythms and all the other hormonal cascades that go on in the body. So, it is very important to connect to the earth just to regulate the, and normalize the hormone cascades, if nothing else. So by just staying connected to the earth, our body's detoxification and defense systems will be optimized. Better sleep, less pain, no chronic inflammation. Our blood cells won't clump together, which means the blood moves faster, which increases oxygen uptake, which increases metabolism of toxins, and speeds healing. It's nature working together in harmony.